Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to try and make my northern bog style mixed bonsai forest even better. I really like this forest. It's a mix of two native trees, the North American larches, and in the background, the North American black spruce. I've always had these two dead trees here as kind of the focal point of the forest on the left hand side. And I have one more taller black spruce, a living one that I could put in this forest. And that's what I was thinking of doing today is to maybe relocate the one dead spruce here and replace it with a living tree. Here is a look at the tree that I'm going to place in the forest today. It's from the same batch of black spruce as all the other seedlings. Um, John bought them all as a bulk order of seedlings. I think he had to buy like 50 of them. And he used a lot of them in his forest plantings and that. And he gave me all the excess ones. And I gave a lot of them away, but I kept enough for a forest here. And I still have one that I was going to grow as a specimen all by itself. But I'm thinking I should combine it into this forest. I think, you know, it's a matching style, that slim conical shape of the tree. So I think it would look really good in this forest. In this forest, I have kind of all the spruce in the background. I've got one spruce off to the left-hand side here that's kind of in the foreground. But I think I need another spruce in the foreground to kind of mix it up a bit. So there's not just, you know, larch and then spruce in the background. Here is a look at the layout of the forest. So I have the spruce in the background, providing a dark background. And then my intention is in fall when the larches turn their nice golden yellow color, you'll get that contrast of the golden yellow larches against the dark green backdrop of the black spruce. In the planting, all the larches are towards the front of the forest and all the spruce towards the back. So one thing I'd like to do is integrate them a little more to make more of a gradual transition from the spruce to the larch. So here's my spruce tree that's closest to the front of the planting. And the larch that I have furthest back is here. So there is some integration, but I think, I feel it needs another spruce out front here. So I was thinking of keeping this dead spruce here, taking this dead spruce and maybe moving it back and planting the live black spruce in the front here. Another feature to the shape of this forest is I have the spruce in the background, the black spruce, the apex is here. So it forms an asymmetrical triangle. And then with the larch, I have the apex of the triangle, the asymmetrical triangle here, represented by the dead spruce. So I have two asymmetrical triangles with the apex of each triangle offset from each other to kind of create a little more interest. And I, I think it works quite well. I still get an overall pleasing shape to the overall forest. And then my two groups of trees each have their own individual apex. So by planting the spruce here, I think it'll reinforce that, those two triangular shapes. And I think they'll interact in the forest really, really nicely. I'm going to begin the work now by getting the new spruce out of its pot, get it root pruned and ready for planting. My first step is to get the tree out of the pot. Now this spruce is growing in a root maker pot and they have all these air holes in it and they're designed to air prune roots. So the roots will kind of curl around, hit a ridge, grow out the, the opening here, and the air will dry them off the roots and they'll start back uh, dividing in the soil. So it's air pruning the roots. So I don't know how easy it, it will be to get it out of this pot. I'm going to try pulling. Oh, it comes out quite easily. Sometimes the roots kind of lock themselves in these pots. So there I go. There's the tree out of the pot and you can see it has all this liverwort on the top and uh, Irish moss there and nasty stuff so let's get rid of that first all right here I go I'll start combing out all these weeds and nasty stuff off the surface 
This was a job I meant to do long ago and just never found the time. Which, according to me, means I have too many trees. And I think that is a very true statement. So I am not sure. I think I think this was planted in the root maker pot by John, who donated these trees. I don't think I put it in here. So this will be its first repotting by me. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of roots and root system this tree has. It should be fairly strong. It's been growing well. So I think this forest, I can grow the trees taller slowly over many, many years. I think there's enough room around each tree because I'm pruning them to that tight conical shape that there'll be lots of room to grow them a little taller. And you know, if I have to bring the conical shape out a little wider, I have room to do that. So this spring, I will have pruned the top of the tree and root pruned it, which, you know, is, seems quite dramatic but you know I've reduced the top and I'll reduce the roots in kind of proportion so you know because I've reduced the top of the tree I don't need as much of a root system to support that growth and because I will be reducing the roots uh, vice versa so you know the roots don't have to work as hard to feed the upper part of the tree so it's a good it's good to do both operations in proportion if you can. All right, I'm getting down to a fairly compact root system. I've got most of the old nursery soil out of the roots. So I think I'm almost ready to wash the root system. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Okay, so into the water it goes. All right, into the water goes the spruce. I'll just leave it sit there for a little bit while I I talk about washing roots. I hear so many people say never bear root a pine or a coniferous tree because of the mycorrhiza. You'll wreck the mycorrhiza that is a fungus that's associated with the roots. It lives in symbiosis with the tree. So the mycorrhiza fungi breaks down elements in the soil into a form that the tree can use so the tree benefits from it. In turn, the tree feeds the fungus the sugars that the tree makes and keeps the fungi happy and alive. So the two trade off their energies and sometimes the fungus population gets too high and the tree will actually send out toxins in its roots, acids that kill off the fungi to keep it under control. Otherwise the fungus would just take off and take too much sugar from the tree. Uh, so there's always a balance between the benefit of the fungus to the tree and the amount of energy that the fungus pulls out of the tree. And I've heard it's up to 20% that the fungus, the root fungus, the mycorrhiza, will take up to 20% of the tree's energy to feed the fungus. So there's always a trade-off. And uh, my feeling, with bonsai is the better the soil, like the if you're feeding it with either organic fertilizer or chemical fertilizer, if you're feeding the tree, there's less of a need for the mycorrhiza because you're giving the roots all the nutrients in that that the tree can use and it's in a form that it can use almost right away, especially with chemical fertilizers. Um, now washing the roots, there's two types of mycorrhiza. There's ones that the threads of the mycorrhiza fungus actually go into the cells of the roots. So you can't wash those away. They're always there in the roots. The other type is fungi that lives around the cells of the roots and that can be washed away. Now, to me, we're growing bonsai and the importance is to get that root system sorted out. I'm not a fungi farmer. I'm not growing bonsai to cultivate fungi. So I bear root my pines and my coniferous trees and my spruce and my larch because I want to work on the root system. To me, that's more important to get the root system sorted out than to cultivate the fungi 
in the soil. Because I'm feeding the trees, I, I you don't. The fungi is less important, that's for sure. It always plays a role. They say it, it fights off disease and stuff. It has benefits. But you're not going to wash all the fungi out of the uh, roots. There'll always be parts of it remaining. And if you want, you can throw some of your old soil into the new soil to kind of inoculate it to keep that population of fungi going. Uh, so you have to decide what's more important when you're repotting. Getting a beautiful looking radial root system that branches out and is fine and has all these root tips or leaving your root system in whatever soil you have in there whatever the root system looks like and never touching it and to me I find that what do I find that I find that you're ignoring the important part of roots is that you want to cultivate your roots like the branches on a bonsai dividing from one root to two to four to six to eight, always dividing them. And that's what gives the more root tips you have in your soil, the more water and nutrients can go up to the top of the tree. And the healthier your tree will be and the more ramification you can get in the branches. So to develop that root system is the most important thing for me, not to not touch the root system and leave the fungi alone because the fungi will repopulate and you're never going to wash it all out and it's not that important with a bonsai. It's more important to get the root system sorted out so you get rid of all the tangled roots and uh, get a nice kind of flat radial root system. That's important to me and so it's up to you. You've got to decide what's more important, growing fungi or growing a good root system. That's the reason I bare root my trees because to me growing a really nice good looking root system which will keep the tree healthy in the long run. And that's what's important to me is the health of that root system and growing that beautiful bonsai root system that allows that huge uptake of water and nutrients to the top of the tree. The fungus is secondary to me. Um, I should side note that I've been bare rooting all my trees for 30 years and I've never killed a tree because I've, because I've bare rooted the root system. I have killed many trees because I prune the root system too much, but never directly just from bare rooting a root system. Uh, to me, getting those roots into new soil, which is porous and airy, is far more beneficial to the root system than leaving it alone in this wet, stagnant old soil that maybe the original soil the tree was growing in or remnants of garden soil. and. Yeah, so I, I think it's more beneficial uh, to replace all the soil with good bonsai soil, a nice even consistency in your pot, and it really makes the tree healthy. Also, if you have a pocket of soil, the original soil from the tree that you've never bare rooted, that's going to stay really wet, and then your bonsai soil, this nice soil around that root system is going to dry out faster. So you're going to be watering for your bonsai soil, and that's going to stay nice uh, hydration level but the soil in the root base that original soil or that garden soil or the soil that was collected in is going to always stay too wet and rot those roots out so they're not going to be healthy and that's another reason I bear root it's just to keep a consistent soil in the whole pot so the tree it, they do really well and that's what I found with my experience um, and I also add that uh, all these people that tell you never bear root this root system, I doubt they've ever bare rooted a root system. Uh, they've been told this from someone, their master or their, their teacher, and their teacher was told this from their teacher. And yeah, I, I think I bare rooted many, many, many root systems and it's always been successful. And the only time it hasn't is when I've over pruned. So uh, that's my experience. Uh, maybe people have different experience. Uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, I doubt all these people tell you never bear root a coniferous tree. Uh, probably have never ever bear rooted a coniferous tree is what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. And then don't get me started on the sheen. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> so
So I'm just uh, getting the soil out of the roots, combing it away carefully. It looks good. It's a good root system. It's not too deep. I won't have to do a whole lot of major cutting. I think there's one root that goes down fairly deep here, but it's not ridiculous. It's not like really long and thick. I think it's been pruned at one time before, which is good. Okay, I think I've got the roots combed out really well. I've got all the tangles combed out. I've got the soil removed. Time to do the root pruning. All right, let's have a look at the roots here. So yeah, they're really good. There's a few thick roots that go down. Like most of them I can spread out to make a radial root base. But here's one that goes straight down that will have to be pruned back. So I'll take it right back to here. Taking that off. And then here's that other thick part over here. There's that thick root that's hitting. You can see it's very rigid. So that needs to be pruned back also. And there's lots of other fine feeder roots so I can cut into this root quite safely. So I'm going to come in again at about the same level and just prune it off horizontally like that. And that should allow me to get it to sit quite nicely with a flat kind of root system. And you can see these roots haven't grown this year yet. They're still black. Um, what happens in winter is a lot of these fine roots die off. You can see the black ones compared to the lighter brown ones. And that happens with all coniferous trees is that uh, roots die over the winter and then they regrow in spring and that creates that uh, they create their own soil with dead roots and pine needles so I'm going around now just pruning off the really really long roots like that kind of balancing my radial root system And now I've got to look at my surface roots um, just to see if there's any kind of really strange ones. That's a dead root there. I'm pruning that off, making sure there's, you know, no roots that are crossing. Here's one here that's crossing. So I'll take that off like that. One growing straight down here. Take that off. Like that. Okay, I think that's looking good. Maybe a few more of these long roots, just prune those back. And I think that's a pretty safe root system to keep. Hopefully the tree will do really well. Time will tell. There's this root sticking up here. I'm just going to get rid of that. Yeah. So that's looking good. That's a good, a good root system on this spruce. Here is my spruce tree, all root pruned, top pruned, and it's ready for planting. I'm going to try the tree out, just kind of holding it in front to see what it would look like. So there's the height. So it's slightly taller than my dead one here see what it would look like. So it's too tall for this side of the forest, that's for sure. Uh, it, it does look good on this side, but I would have to move or take this tree out. So I'm going to try keeping this tree, this dead tree in place. I'm going to remove this one and see what it looks like in that spot. So here I go. And I'll leave this tree in the water until I'm ready for it. The dead spruce in the planting, I believe they had a root system, like a dead root system on them. So I don't think it's just a matter of pulling them out of the planting here. I think I'll have to kind of rake away some of the, the moss that's on the surface of the soil here. And I might have to kind of dig down a bit to get the tree out of the pot. So I'm just kind of raking away. And it is possible, you know, I may not even use this dead tree. 
in this planting. You know, maybe one is enough. We'll, we'll see. Or I may relocate it. And it all depends on how crowded the forest looks with the new tree in there. Now I'm pulling a little harder, but it's still very tough to get out. So it's not just a stick in the pot here. It definitely has a, a dead root system buried deep in the soil here. Which, you know, would eventually rot away and the tree might tip over. And I think what's holding it in place is all the living roots from the other trees have kind of surrounded this root base and kind of locked it in place. You can see if I lift up, it wants to lift everything out of the planting. So it might be just a matter of doing that, kind of pulling it up hard and just making a mess and then fixing it all. I'm going to try and try and get it out without creating too much havoc but I don't think it's going to be easy kind of getting my root rake in underneath there it goes okay that wasn't too bad so there's the original roots here and you can see all the fine roots from the larch trees and everything growing around it and here's a thuja that grew up in the planting that I want to save I'll put that in the bucket of water too. Okay, so that has opened up the spot in the forest here. So I'm just going to clean it away a bit and then I've got to try my new tree in here and see what it looks like. Who knows, maybe it won't look good at all. We'll check it out. All right, I'll get the tree. Here is my living tree now. Now, I need to pick a front. The tree is a slimmer conical in this view, or the opposite view. And I, I think that's kind of important to make it as slim as possible in this view. It's a little wider here. I think this is probably a good front view here. So I'm just going to try the tree in place there. Step back and have a look at it and see if I like it at all. Here is a distant shot of the forest with the new tree roughly in place there. I have to admit it looks really good. It provides that nice apex. It really brings the triangular shape, the overall silhouette of the forest. It really brings it together. I, I think having that living tree as the highest tree in the forest is looks better than the dead trees. I think it's a good focal point. So next, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the position. Next, I want to try out the other dead tree in some various other places and see if I need it at all. So I have my dead tree and I'm just trying it on this side. No, that doesn't look good. And I'm wondering behind here if it'll look good at all. I think it's too crowded. I think it just makes it look too crowded. And it's, yeah, I don't think I need it. I think the one dead tree is good. And this is the more interesting dead dead tree with all this weeping branches. This one, this one's okay. But I don't think it will add anything. This tree would look good in my large forest. It kind of suits that style, but I don't think it suits this forest. I think this one does. I think having this tree so tall and slim and vertical really adds a, a vertical feeling to the forest. It sort of, uh, it complements all the other trees. It gives the whole forest that feeling of thin vertical trees. And I, I think it's, it certainly improves it. So let's get the tree planted now. All right, here I go with the planting. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see because it's so crowded in here. That's one trouble with forests is that it's always hard to get into them. So I'm, the root base is at a pretty good level now. So I'm combing out the roots and then I've got all this soil around where I dug it up, the other dead tree up. 
and I'm kind of backfilling with that soil and then I can always plant more soil on top if I need it and I've got to make sure my roots are kind of radial in here and kind of going down into the soil that they're not sitting up on the soil so they you know they won't be growing on the surface of the soil they'll be going down into the soil creating that sort of flat conical root shape which allows you to raise the trees in the future if you want to to expose the roots if the roots are flat with the surface of the soil you can't raise them because then every root is out of the soil and every part of the root is out of the soil not just the base of the tree so that's why it's important to have those roots taper like the trunk comes down flares into the roots and the roots always go downhill into the soil they're never horizontal with the surface of the soil otherwise as the tree matures you run into trouble with those roots they'll never look right so the tree is planted I'm going to kind of work the soil into the root system and I'm going to put some new soil in here I need some new soil so here I go I'm going to put some soil around the base of the tree and work it in and if it's on a bit of a hill here that's good because I naturally have a hill so I've got to make sure this tree is vertical too to me nothing looks more unnatural in a forest than trees that aren't vertical you know unless the whole forest is windblown or you're trying for a clump style rather than a mature forest but if you go in pretty well any mature forest you'll find generally speaking that all the trees are vertical because trees tend to grow vertical unless there's some outside force that acts on them that causes them to be windswept or uh, what's another reason uh, maybe it's tipped over in the you know maybe the soil is so shallow and stuff on a rock that the tree is tipped over from the wind or an avalanche or something that causes it to not grow straight up and down but generally trees like to grow straight especially spruce and larch if they can and there's always examples where they don't but to me I, I like the look of a forest with vertical trees in it I don't like them when they're all splayed out to me that just looks unrealistic for one thing it looks more like a, a clump of trees that's maybe growing on an island or something not deep in a forest I think vertical trees look stately if that's a way of describing them they look they have good composure they look strong mighty a tree on a slant looks like mm, it's enduring hardship it's going to tip over someday because you do see a lot of trees in forests that they've tipped over and the tree is like say this tree tipped over it's hanging up on the tree beside it and it's still growing fine it's just on a slant and that's just you know the wind or something toppled it and it can't tip over and hit the forest floor because there's so many trees surrounding it that it just kind of grows on the angle so the tree is feeling very firm in the soil here I'm getting all these air pockets out the roots are nicely in the soil now okay I think that's good the tree feels firm in the soil I'm going to give it a water and then I'll clean up all my soil and replant my moss here I go with the water now 